近年来，新加坡不断的发展，不断的改进。随着社会的改变，大家也在挣钱的道路上更有创意，一同和我们的时事编导探索一些另类的职业，用金钱换取友情，私家侦探，你为什么跟踪我？金融诈骗，非法美容师，调教王，手伸出来，收债员，兄弟，我来过嘞，你记得我吗？非法野生动物贩卖。成人用品店，实际上我们对这些职业真正了解多少？社会对这些工作有什么看法呢？就法律而言，这些工作的黑白区域是什么？我如果我养，我可能就是猫跟狗而已，因为我觉得它是比较友善。如果是一个蜥蜴的话，它不是很，不是一个很漂亮的动物。濒临绝种的动物。是非法，那些不是濒临绝种的动物就是合法。这里面有一个这个道德跟价值的一个判断。我有看过，也是很多人去拿一个 H 口的，豪猪吧。我我只知道，还有好像是 D E， 这两个是唯一我知道的，其他的我不太清楚。我记得我是我第一步了解他们是什么生物，但我还是会坚持我的坚持己见，就是说，如果他是对我的生命有害的话呢，或者是会有可能会伤害主人，那我就可能就不鼓励了。新加坡不允许别人去收藏这些。动物是他们有他们的原因。我们需要有一个规范，不能够没有任何节制的去对于这个动物造成一些伤害。我觉得我们的社会应该要多关注这个非法现象，非法野生动物贩卖。新加坡哪些宠物是合法的，哪些是非法的？电报应用上有一个社交圈，专门卖外来宠物。我在网上找到，三十一岁的 Randy， 他自称是外来宠物爱好者。他之前领养了两条有须蜥蜴和一只绿蜥蜴。那时候，警察从 Randy 的卧室中夺走了这三只外来宠物，结果被罚款八千新元。So I'm somebody that. Always had an obsession or a fascination with reptiles growing up, so I I was always interested in things like Jurassic Park being my first movie, or cartoons like Land Before Time. So it's something that I always had an interest in, and I never really grew out of it. As I aged, I actually wanted to keep a reptile as a pet, so I tried to search for reptiles online, and lo and behold, I had my first pet. I'm never always connected socially with people around me. It's also one of the reasons why I got drawn to reptiles because reptiles in general they're always outcasted in a sense. People always look at them weird, you know, like e, you know, there's a lizard there, oh, there's a snake. These reptiles that I kept as pets, they even provide a lot of emotional support for keepers. So when I had the opportunity to actually keep one as a pet, it was one of the best experiences of my life. It's not an animal that I keep like in a tank 24/7, like on display. I bring it out of its tank. I have it take natural sunlight. I give a lot of enrichment to the animal too. You know, things like making them chase their food around, get exercise in, and they actually sleep on the same bed as me. <laughs> With most things, the more you do it, I guess you don't think anything will happen to you. And one day, they just uh, I got caught. I had two bearded dragons and an iguana. The animals are confiscated from me. I was drinking a lot. I was smoking a lot. This went on for maybe I think a year, a year and a half. I felt very sorry about myself. Uh, just in a very bad place, lah. I will never be able to separate myself from my passion and my interest in reptiles, and I had to find a way to carry on. I started to frequent our nature reserves more often. Take notice of the local reptiles we actually have in Singapore. Our saltwater crocodiles, our monitor lizards, our cobras—you know—all the other kind of native and reptiles that we have. I also started filming them, taking videos of them. So I started this platform called Dragon Voices. A long time ago, I used to share a special bond with one of these dragons. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. I think Dragon Voices was a very, very big part in helping me heal. Because it really took my mind off of like 
the past of like what I used to have and it helped me channel it into the present. Am I a person who enjoys reptiles and who love to keep reptiles? Yes. Despite of all that's happened, that will never change. Hi, Yilin. Hi, Max. Yishen 做一些物品带进新加坡非法走私这些动物啊所以他们在收这个货车的时候那通常你们其实是会叫你们的 就给他们熟悉，呃，也也有给他们训练啊，好像今天你所看到的模拟训练，将这些呃物品藏隐藏在，我知道的行李箱或者货车里，就是说慢慢的从呃一段时间训练过后，他们就会知道这物品的气味，
稀有品种是属于大自然的，也许会在我们的生活环境面不容易生存。乌龟啊，这些没问题。那你说像蛇啊，或者是蜘蛛啊，那个我就不不能苟同。欢迎来到我们野生动物康复中心。我们这个中心是为了拯救、治疗以及呃放归我们的不同的野生动物。我们中心当中有两种不一样的野生动物。第一种就是我们本土的野生动物，嗯，就说好像在外面受伤啊，需要拯救，就会把它带来给我们。还有另外一种是这些非法野生动物的。的活体动物啊，就是好像我们在机场啊、嗯、港口啊做检查的时候找到的这些动物，还是在我们突击检查的时候找到有人诶呃隐藏着那些非法野生动物在他们家里的话，就会被呃起获。你们最常起获的野生动物是什么？近年来我们比较最常见的是野生呃活体动物有。这些好像狼蛛啊，就是 tarantula， 还有我们有有须蜥蜴，就是 bearded dragon， 还有新龟 star tortoise 之类的这些野生动物品种。这些外来的野生动物是在我们本地是找不到的。说第一个是我们能够跟其他国家合作，把这些野生动物就是运回，就是送回地的这个地方。第二，我们也可以跟就是 m o n d a y w i l d l i f e Group 或者是 Acres 一起讨论、一起合作，看他们要不要将一些野生动物作为教育啊。还有第三，呃，我们也可以把这些野生动物在我们自己的康复中心作为呃教育的标本。嗯，那为什么这些动物不能在新加坡呢？因为。呃，如果很多人想要买这些野生动物的话，这个野生动物的需求会呃即将呃生长，这会导致这些野生动物在外头的数量就会减低，可能会影响到它生存。如果把这个这些野生动物从其他国家带进来的话，就是其他国家的栖息地啊、生态系统啊就会呃失去平衡。我知道有些动物是不合法在在新加坡卖的，可是，在别的国家，有些人把这些东西当成宠物。我觉得他们不应该这样做，而且不应该是禁止。你因为你又不是说我们不可以有机会欣赏那个动物还是什么，而是这个动物可能不适合我们的这个气候，所以那个动物来了之后，可能他们不可以生存。那它对整个生态环境就会起很严重的一个破坏。So, welcome to my room. Cool. The whole reptile session is partly linked to Game of Thrones as well. This is all that remains um, since the unfortunate incident. This is the Malayan box turtle. One of the few exotic animals that you can keep in Singapore. Okay, I will. I, I can touch the shell. Oh, okay. Is he friendly? Like, does he allow you to, you know? Yeah, they're not very uh, fond of being handled for long, long oh, hours. Oh, that's why he's sort of like trying to move away. Yeah, he's trying to get back okay. to his little we'll, basking spot there. We'll put him back and give him his peace. <laughs> yeah, let's put him back. Okay. Okay, so this right here is my other pet that I have. This is actually a green tree frog. Green tree frog? Yep. So green tree frogs are, of course, uh, they're not native to Singapore, but they're one of the few reptiles and amphibians that you can legally keep as a pet here. So this guy is called Dirk. This guy is a little bit more friendly to being held, okay. but he can jump if he wants. Okay, I'm, definitely not gonna bite, I, think. I have never touched a frog in my life, so... Okay, Dirk. Do you think he can sense my fear? Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So how does it feel? It's a, he's a bit sticky. But I always remember to keep them moist. Because, Keep them moist. Yeah, because the skin uh, is very, very susceptible to anything that goes on in the environment. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, buddy. <laughs> okay. For me, it's just a way for me to continue, right? And more importantly, continue within the confines of what we can and cannot do in Singapore.